TTC. Moving 1.8 million people every day in Canada's largest city. Our customers rely on us to get them where they're going on time. But there is a problem. Attention customers on line one, Young University Spadina. Due to signal problems at Davisville Station, expect longer than normal travel times during your commute. Our aging signaling system, which controls train movement and communicates with transit control, is past its design life and needs to be replaced with a more efficient and reliable system. The solution, a brand new state-of-the-art signaling system called Automatic Train Control, or ATC. So what is a signaling system? All subway trains on the TTC are monitored and controlled to keep a safe distance from each other, since they frequently operate at speeds that do not enable them to stop within sighting distance of the driver. The signaling system monitors the position of trains, allows coordinated movement, and informs transit control where trains are on the line at any time. Transit control is the nerve center of the TTC. Specially trained and experienced personnel monitor and direct all of the TTC's subway traffic. The current system is the same system that was installed when the subway first opened in 1954 and is known as a fixed block system. This works by dividing the subway line into geographical sections called blocks and each block has a signal. The trains enter, travel through, then exit each block. Only one train can be in a block at any time, and the blocks on either side are considered protection zones. Now let's say you're on a train traveling downtown. When the train enters a block, it sends a signal to transit control that it has entered that block. As it leaves that block, it sends another signal to transit control that it has left these blocks and it is safe for the next train to enter. Although this system is safe, it is not the most efficient or reliable system available today. Trains must wait for the blocks to clear, leaving large gaps called headway between trains. The current system is approaching 60 years old in some areas. Because of its age, there are often failures which cause delays. New parts are now obsolete and it is expensive to maintain. In addition, the current signaling system cannot allow for more capacity. ATC, or Automatic Train Control, is responsible for keeping trains on the system safe and maximizes service for our customers. ATC utilizes communication-based train control technology, which is a signaling system that communicates with transit control more efficiently. It is a signaling system which monitors trains more accurately and will eventually make the whole system more reliable. Let's take a look at how this works. ATC incorporates moving block technology. Unlike the current fixed block system in which trains pass over stationary sections on the track, the moving block virtually encircles and moves with the train itself. Speed, acceleration, braking and precise location are constantly monitored by the signaling system. Calculations are made multiple times a second to determine how large that train's moving block should be and therefore how close trains can be to one another. This means trains can safely travel faster and closer together, which allows for more trains on the system at one time. More trains and more frequent service results in moving more passengers and can greatly reduce crowding on vehicles. Many of the delays that are experienced now with the old signaling system will be reduced or eliminated once it is fully implemented. When the ATC project is complete, TTC subway service will be more efficient and reliable than ever before. We know ATC is the best modern solution for our signaling system. But how do we take out the current aging system and begin installing the new ATC system? This is actually an enormous challenge for the TTC, in that the current system is being used 24 hours a day, 
and if it's turned off, vehicles can't move. The first stage of ATC changes existing infrastructure to new computerized equipment that accepts ATC. Implementation is currently bit by bit overnight, but that doesn't allow much time to get all of the work done, tested, and then restore regular service. Let's take a look at a day in the life of the TTC subway system. It's just after 5 a.m. Trains are getting ready to roll out of the yards and make their way throughout the lines so they can start service at 6 a.m. All through the day and into the night, trains roll up and down the lines carrying hundreds of thousands of passengers. At the end of the service day, the trains make their way back to the yards for the night, leaving the main lines after 2 a.m. Around 2.30 a.m., Work crews move specifically designed work cars and equipment onto the main line to the work area. By the time they arrive at the work site and set up, it is 3 a.m., allowing only 90 minutes for them to conduct their work before they have to leave the system for the morning service to begin. By 5 a.m., the work crews are off the line, and the service trains begin another busy day. As you can see, although some of the component installation can be done during overnight hours, much of the work needs a longer window of time. The solution to this is weekend closures during off-peak service hours. To install a system as complex as ATC, working only during the narrow time available overnight will take too long. The most practical solution is localized closures. For every one day that any area is closed for installation, it is equal to five weeks of overnight construction. That's a huge amount of work that can be done in one day, which speeds up the installation process, saving time and money. Our aging signaling system urgently needs to be replaced. The sooner we get new components installed and ATC implemented, the sooner our customers can begin to enjoy all the benefits of a modernized transit system that makes Toronto proud.